Yeah, man! Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you chicken gizzard curry stew. Alright, you're gonna need a, one tablespoon of parsley and dried basil, quarter teaspoon of dried pimento berries, rosemary. You're gonna need a teaspoon of grinded rosemary, dried. You can use fresh too as well. Oregano. I would have a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of marjoram, two old cloves, an onion or two, a stock of scallion, a spring of thyme. Four between six garlic cloves, a tablespoon of sea salt, quarter quarter cup cooking oil. I use coconut oil. A tablespoon of white vinegar, distilled white vinegar, and three tablespoons of curry powder. Visit JamaicaDinners.com for the recipe. This is chicken, chicken's gizzards. It's frozen, so I'm just gonna um, pour some water in our container and just put the frozen chicken gizzard in the water and allow it to defrost. I have scotch bonnet pepper and quarter piece ginger. I'm going to start by preparing our vegetables. This is a scallion. All right, remove dying leaves and cut off ends. Garlic cloves. Remove the leaf, cut off ends, and trim any spoilage. Just do as you see me doing. Do as I'm doing. Peace, ginger. About half, about quarter inch length. Peel ginger. Onion. Do the same for the onion. Just remove the outer leaf, the brown leaf. Just remember now the first layer of the onion, the onion is the strongest. So you just want to remove the brown leaf. And cut off ends. We might use another onion, but we'll see. So scotch bonnet pepper, we use it close to use it while stewing. This is container add one and container add two. Spring of time. With natural cooking, I like to add ingredients to us while stewing. This is rosemary, dried rosemary. Do as you see me doing and grind the, the rosemary fine. Just 
supermarkets, sometimes they, they come grinded fine already. But you want it to be grinded fine. If you're using fresh herbs, just chop it. Or you can just break a stem off and just drop it in a stew. Put half in container one and half in container two. The salt. I use sea salt. So measure and add one tablespoon of sea salt. Make sure you leveled, leveled off the salt. Don't add a mountain of salt. Add it to, add it to container one. Old cloves. You want two old cloves, one in each container. Marjoram. Measure and add one teaspoon of marjoram, half in each container. Oregano, oregano, some people call it oregano. Half teaspoon of dried oregano, half in each container. Put half in each container, in each container. Basil. Level up a tablespoon and add half in each container. And remember now you can use any of these herbs fresh. Just chop it. Parsley. Measure and add half of a tablespoon in each container. Dried pimento berries. I always say quarter teaspoon. See I measure a quarter teaspoon. Put it in container one. Scotch bonnet, rinse the vegetables. I just rinsed the scotch bonnet pepper, the scallion, the thyme, the garlic cloves. Put the spring of thyme in container two, a piece of ginger as well, in container one. Dice or slice onion. Divide the onions as well. I'm going to go ahead and use the other onion. Scallion, dice scallion. Keep the onions, keep the ingredients separated.
Next, grind garlic to puree. Or fine. Or to pulp. Or you can do as you see me doing a mash. Use a knife and mash the garlic on a clean surface, a chopping board. Put half portion of garlic in each container. So container two covered and container one on top covered. Put this aside for later. Scotch bunny pepper, we're gonna, we're gonna use it close to close to the end. This is our chicken gizzard. This is a gizzards. It's been defrosting. I'm just breaking them apart. They're frozen still. They're still frozen. Just gonna let it stay for a while more. Ready? I'm just gonna throw this water off. And then pour fresh water on top. Now drizzle. About a couple, three tablespoons of white vinegar, distilled white vinegar. We're gonna start preparing this gizzard for cooking. This chicken's gizzard for cooking. Just so that you can see, people might not know what chicken gizzard, gizzards look like. So this is a chicken gizzard. Usually that white part is where the food is stored. And I think it breaks down the food before it transfers somewhere else. The chicken's gizzard is an affordable meal. I paid $130 a pound. All of this is a pound. Just so like pennies. Penny US. That's like a nickel. Or a couple pennies. A couple pennies a pound. So um whether you're poor or not, a lot people like to eat it. So you can call it maybe sometime you have money and sometime you don't. So um if time come here, you don't have money and you need to cook a meal, you can buy something like this, a chicken gizzards. The flavor of it is close to kidney and the taste of cow's art. It has its own unique flavor. It's not steak and it's not chicken. It's a unique flavor. Alright, so do as you see me doing and kind of trim off all fats get between the gazard and clean it off properly make sure there's no yellow film this set of gazard was prepared properly I don't know where the, 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 the shop bought it in the wholesale I don't know where they bought it but this is clean I'm not doing that much cleaning like the first one I did I, I did a lot more cleaning this one is prepared properly the butcher or the farmer prepared it properly 
so those you see me doing and get in between there's not too much of getting in between anything just trim off the the, the the little bit of fat that you might see around it and then clean it off make sure that you don't see any yellow stuff anything that's yellow get rid of it Like I said, this one is prepared properly so I don't have to do much cleaning. See, see, see I was telling you? This is what you want to get off just in case one might slip through. But I must give kudos to the, the butcher. The butcher did a good job. I don't know if this one is imported or what. It probably is imported because first world countries don't eat these type of things. I don't know if the south, the south might cook it. The south will cook it. South cook everything. The south. So go through patiently. It's best if you do this part properly. Because if you don't, I don't believe you'll get a good heat. Or maybe it's just me. So if you see the stain, like a stain on, on it, just kind of use a dull knife. See, I bought a knife set, so it's good to keep a dull knife like this around so you can do stuff like this. So use a dull knife like this and kind of scrape it off and make sure it's cleaned properly. See, this is what you want. So, I'm just going to continue while. Alright, so this is the last one. This is a pound. I'm not cooking all of this. I think they gave me a little bit more than a pound. Remember I was telling you, you need a dull knife. See, so dull I can rub it on my skin, my skin surface and it's, it didn't even scratch me. That's how dull my knife is. As I was saying, I didn't cook all the pound. I think they gave me a, more than a pound. All right, with this now that you prepared it, it, drizzle a tablespoon of white vinegar and then rinse it under fresh running water properly. Just just wash it off. And then kind of kind of gently squeeze squeeze the excess water off gently. All right, so this is the idea and this is what you want. You want your chicken's gizzard to be clean and prepared properly before cooking. So this is a close up. See so how pretty this chicken gizzard looks. Alright, so put it aside for later until you're ready for it again. Put to heat. Be covered. A pressure cooker. Put stove gauge on four medium low. Just allow it to get hot for a couple seconds, a few seconds. We're not gonna fry anything, so we don't we don't have to wait for the frying pan to get hot. So a few seconds after, measure and add three tablespoons curry powder I'm adding two now but you're gonna see why I say three with this chicken's gizzard you gotta add enough curry so that the chicken's gizzard look curried stove gauges on four let's allow it to burn a little This is called burning the curry. This is how I burn curry. That's a, a garlic clove. Add a garlic clove. Use a fork. 
and and poke it in that one garlic clove that we throw in and kind of use it to stir to stir the curry the curry powder on the pot's bottom burned in the curry somewhat to be honest this part is probably not necessary but hey this is what I see people do they burn the curry they tend to burn the curry there are many ways they can burn the curry some people add the oil first and then add the curry and burn it a little and then add the meat add the chicken piece or whatever they're cooking all right add quarter cup oil cooking oil I use coconut oil right after just kind of mix it up even it even it down on the, on the pot's bottom and then add the prepared cleaned chicken's gizzards along with ingredients seasonings from container add one you don't have to worry about what we didn't hide or what we need to hide because everything is in it oh this is the half onion that I'm gonna chop it and put it after pressure all right so do as you see me doing and kind of stir in the ingredients from the container add one and kind of mixing the curry and quote all the chicken's gizzards evenly next add four cups of water this one that you just clamp it on and make sure the rubber is on properly number one it's in the socket properly on the lid properly and uh, is in its groove make sure the rubber is in the, in the lids groove properly all right so this doesn't have um, a guide where I can it's just one smooth edge around the edge of the, the pressure cooker pressure cooker pan just clamp this so just put the lid on and clamp this little big red thing I see on top and then once you see the red button push out that means it's safe and the, the two sides are clamped together tight that means it's, it's, it's locked properly but the red mark that you see that pushed out that's the guide to let me know that it's, it's, it's locked properly a few minutes later that little red thing that you see on the side on the, in the lid top pushed out that tells me that tells me that the pressure is set in the pan so that means I can't open it I can't move it just a lot once you hear the hissing that's when you put your timer for 20 minutes the stove stage is on 4 medium rand of pressure cooker you guys set it to where it says chicken a little pictures that says chicken vegetable or just and then it, it will lock down I'm gonna do a how to use a pressure cooker part 2 so look out for that Stove gauge is on four. Set the timer for 20, 20 minutes later. Turn the stove off and gently move your pressure cook at a cool spot on the stove. So minutes later, about 20, 15, 20 minutes later, once you see a little red spot that I point on, the, the little knob goes down. That means it's safe to open. If that knob is up, don't do not open the lid. The knob, the little red knob, has to go down. Then it's safe to open. Alright, so this is what our stew looks like. Use our fork and poke straight through. If it goes through easily, that means it's tenderized and ready for stewing. You can use your fingers as well and break it apart. If it breaks apart easily, that means it's ready for stewing. So now, put to heat a saucepan, a medium sized saucepan. You can cook it in the same pressure cooker, but I wouldn't recommend pressure cookers a special thing. So pressure in it and stew in something else and clean your pressure cooker and put it up. Pressure cooker is not just special, it is expensive. All right, so you remember where I told you we're gonna add one more tablespoon of curry powder? Well, this is where I'm adding the curry powder because the water from the stew that we pressured 
is not rich enough in curry in my view and it needs to be rich that's a way you, you use that to determine if your stew has enough curry when you had a curry and the water and you mix it up together it has to have that curry you see that nice rich look that you see the powder it has the, the water has to kind of have that same rich color so put to heat a saucepan a medium sized saucepan put the stove gauge on four medium low allow the curry to burn for about a minute or two remember I was telling you about the water this is how you want the water this water looks a little light a minute after And two, if you're against burning your curry in the in your pressure cooker, you could add the three the three tablespoons of curry at this time, at this point. It wouldn't make much difference to be honest. This that you saw me just do is not really a safe method. So I recommend. Alright, so one after a minute, add your curry, your chicken gizzard curry brought up to the saucepan. This part that you saw me just where I had the water if you don't feel safe doing it because it don't look that much safe to me add the curry stew to the saucepan and then add the curry powder to the stew it would be okay because you you already burned some of the curry in the in the pan but this is just me um what you say now this is just me adding additional curry that's all really but you would just burn the curry in the beginning and just go ahead and use the three tablespoons all right once you add the stew and the chickens after tenderized chickens gizzard add the seasonings from container two add one tablespoon of distilled white vinegar and stir in the stove's gauge is on four medium low this is the onion, the other onion that I cut. No, I'm just dicing it or slicing it in this and adding it to the stew. So do as you see me doing. Stir in the ingredients. This is scotch bunny pepper. I'm gonna add it near near end. Use the pan's lid, cover the pan properly. Stove's gauge is on four. Allow. 10 minutes stewing I recommend you keep the pans laid on I'm just showing it to you so you can see the progress that's how you want the curry to look have that rich look and so the gizzard the chicken's gizzard the lid on properly allow 30 minutes later now I feel is a good time to add the pepper although just like turkey's neck I believe this this chicken gizzard will do well spicy and it wouldn't even taste spicy
from this one scotch bonnet pepper I'm just going to use half so cut and add half scotch bonnet pepper this is a rich stew I'm brewing away add the half scotch bonnet pepper to your chicken's gizzard curry curry stew that's brewing on the stove this is this is what this is what you want it to look like we're on the right track the gravy is is, is rich enough it's thickening I, I just add the pepper and I can smell the flavor of the pepper already so I'm concerned I'm just gonna let it stay on top. All right, so cover it properly and then out. All right, 40 minutes later, this is what it looks like. You can see the gravy is thickening. I'm gonna taste the stew to see how spicy it is. I'm not tasting any spiciness right now. It's gonna creep up. If it takes too late, it's gonna take a while to get to my brain. I got there in a few seconds. I can taste it. I can taste a little bit of, a little bit of spicy registering in my brain. A little bit, a little teeny bit. So I'm gonna remove it. I just really want the pepper for flavoring. All right, cover it and allow stoves gauges on four medium low allow now would be a good time to turn the stove down on low and just let it simmer for a little while before you finish if you want but i'm not going to 45 minutes this is it this is our chicken gizzards curry stew almost finished cooking on the stove on the website jamaicadinners.com look how rich I heard somebody talk about adding flour to gravy to thicken gravy if you have to add flour to gravy I don't think you're a good cook the flavor of the flour is gonna be in the gravy and to me that's not pure you might can get away with using like a little bit of teeny bit a little teeny bit of cornstarch a little bit if anything but don't you don't have to use cornstarch all right so that's what it looks like cover it and allow 50 minutes if you find that you add too much water to any stew all you have to do is just leave the lid off Turn the stove up and just let it cook out. The water will evaporate eventually. That's all. That's a simple tip. So this is how it looks like. This is what you want. Because I've been there, you know. I didn't just start cooking like this. I was there. I'm a, I've been there. Now would be a good time to add butter for those of you who like butter. The butter will kind of spruce the flavor up some. A simple, a simple, a simple flavor meal like this. Because the meat, the meat to me doesn't have that much or any flavor that much like I said it's close to liver and kidney and kidney and liver have more flavor but art art cow's art don't have that much flavor so it's kind of near near to that cow's art tastes like eating car's tire all right so I'm just gonna let it go on bubble for some for about a minute or two and thicken some more. after a minute with the 50 minutes, it's just a f straight up 50 minutes, I would say. Stewing. Since stewing. Alright, this is what you want. Once the gravy starts sticking to the pot's bottom, that's a sign to say it's ready. It's sticking off and ready.
this is what you want it's thick enough it's very thick and rich this is how you want your gravy to present ready once it starts to stick to the pot's bottom that's a sign to say it's ready it's finished that's it turn it off I didn't add any butter to this but you see it look it looks like I had butter I'm just saying all right so that's it allow allow your stew to sit for about 30 minutes 20 minutes 15 minutes thereabout just allow it to set and mature before serving you can always warm it up again Alright, so before serving, kind of stir your pot in. Take a scoop of this delicious looking. I made, I made to look like gourmet chicken's gizzard curry stew. Oh. And pour it, and pour it on a bed of rice. I know this chicken's gizzard curry stew look very delicious. But it's not that delicious. It's a very simple meal, simple flavor, meat. But I kind of let it look delicious because that's what I do. Not to say it's not a nice meal. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now. It's cooked properly, but it's just that the meat is fresh, fresh in flavor. It doesn't have much flavor, or right? it's a very tiny bit of flavor. This is chickens gizzard curry stew visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe subscribe like share cook this meal yourself and give us feedback all right this is the part that some people don't like and some people like so holla so this is my delicious looking Chicken gizzard curry stew it looks soft and and delicious. The flavor is there, but the meat is a kind of simple meat. I can see why it cost what it cost. See how uh, the fiber? Somebody say meat is not fiber. Look, that's fiber to me. I don't know. I was lost when a person said. I was waiting for somebody else to say something else, but they didn't. So meat is fiber, muscle is fiber. But they say it in book I think I used to buy sports some man's magazine I used to buy back then. And I remember you used to describe muscle as fiber. So I don't know what that one person was talking about. But meat is not fiber. What do you think fiber is a tablet? Probably that's what they thought. A tablet. Once you say fiber, that's fiber. Everything is fiber. The trash, when you juice the orange juice, the trash from the orange juice is fiber. Leaf, when it's dried up, and the dry leaf, that's fiber. When you defecate, mostly fiber come out that's why they always say you need fiber to aid you in that because you know if you don't have fiber you're probably gonna have a hard time doing that doing number two but your that your number two is fiber mostly fiber come out in it if not all fiber So you see me eating this meal quietly. I'm just talking over. It's nice. All right, like I said, it's just me gourmeting up this chicken gizzard curry stew. But you can use your seasonings that you are custom.
Chicken's Gizzard is not my favorite, but I am contented eating it. Until next time, later. Yeah, man! This is just for laughter. Fill him. Fill him. Fill him on it. Once the gravy starts sticking to the... To the so once the gravy is... Once the gravy starts sticking to the top... Once the gravy starts sticking to the pot's bottom... I'm gonna say it already. I'm gonna say it again. This is just for laughter. Special thanks to Answers. I told them I cook online and they gave me a discount. That's where I bought this pressure cooker.